Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I title it Buckle Up, because that's what I think you need to do. We're seeing many cracks in the armor, divergences, weak breath, extreme volatility in the bond market. As one of my members emailed me at the end of the day on Friday, said, I have an eerie feeling the trap door is just ahead and bullish sentiment now is as bad as it was in January. Well, I couldn't agree with him anymore. Let's start off. We're going to take a look at the side by side like we typically do. I'm going to focus on the uh, Russell 2000 ETF IWM today. Then we're going to look at a couple of key indicators. Then I want to talk about oil and gold. All right, side by side, the Dow Industrials was down 424 points this last week. Now, this looks a little bearish in terms of the price action. And what I mean by that is this looks like a bearish engulfing type candle. The, the price action this week basically engulfed the body of the previous candle. And, and they only had quite a bit of a movement to the downside. You know, the bulls brought it back before the end of the week, primarily because of Friday. Uh, and uh, we'll see what kind of continuation we get this coming week. Similar type thing on uh, the S&P 500, down 33 points, but not quite the, the bearish engulfing that we got. A little more sideways type picture. And minimal movement over here, plus 13. Uh, I'm showing plus 13 uh, on, the, on the chart here uh, on the NASDAQ 100. And little doji type candle in here. So the counter trend move in the NASDAQ uh, continues. Uh, you know, we're, we pushed we pushed up in here to the limit. We'll see whether that holds over here on the S&P. And basically the Dow still has not taken out the December 13th high that occurred. Uh, let's go. I'm going to take the quickly side by side here of the Dow and the transport. So I said the Dow was down 424. Transport's up 101. A little bit of an inside up type candle after that big move that occurred last week. Had a big downdraft for a couple of days, then they brought it back. But here we are down below the counter trend uh, line in here. We broke down out of that, so we'll see if we want to continue. I think it will. And I think the transports seem to be leading the industrials to the downside again. Okay, let's go back to the uh, homepage, take a look at the Russell 2000. So IWM was up 405 on Friday. So as was all the major indices, they popped on Friday, a little bit of a counter trend uh, type of thing after having four days of pushing to the downside. For the week, though, down 0.75. So this continues to have a pretty strong movement. Here's that February 2nd high uh, in here. And uh, it has continued to push to the downside. We've broken down through the counter trend line. Let's take a look at this picture. When I look at the Elliott Wave picture that I've got on IWM, here's what I'm looking at. I think that we are in intermediate wave three to the downside. And again, this seems to be the weakest of all the major indices, and it seems to be leading everybody else to the downside. And right now, I have got this, that we are in the third minor wave of the third intermediate wave. And within that, I think we are in the third Manu wave. So we should continue to see very strong movement to the downside. But we've been a little, you know, a little jagged in here. We had a lot of volatility sideways type movement back up in here. Uh, when we break this level, I think it is going to be like the dam broke. Because when we break this level down here, that is the 162 and a half to 163, we're talking about taking out the June, October lows, okay? And we, we do that, the, the dam's going to break on the Russell 2000, and it's going to be leading all, all the major indices to the downside. So we're keeping an eye on it, but there is an alternate count I've got in here. The alternate is that it could possibly be that we have some kind of A, B, you know, movement going on. Now, if this, and here's the thing, for this to be a flat, to this to be an A, B, C, like this, 
this B wave needs to retrace at least 90% of this move in here, and I don't think we've done that yet. So this could turn into a zigzag, but right now that's just an alternate that we're just kind of keeping an eye on. This is playing out so far just fine. And like I said, of course, here's, here's the thing. We take out this level, I think we're going to be on the way. What's the low? 167.46. And then, of course, this level right here I just talked about, key support level on the Russell 2000. Okay, let's look at a couple of indicators. Now, I, I look at the high yield bond fund every day. Okay, so here's the picture. Now, look at this picture right here. This risk off from February 2nd. So this is very much in sync with what I just showed you on the Russell 2000, right? Right here. This downtrend from February 2nd, we've broken down through. And then you look at HYG right here. This looks very much in sync. Now, this is difference. This is divergence from all the other major indices. Okay, I just showed you that when I looked at the side by side, you see what they've been doing. Okay, where's February 2nd? Right around in here. Right in here. Still kind of hanging up. Definitely rising on the NASDAQ, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. And the Dow's kind of been hanging up too in this counter trend-ish type of move in here. So, you know, the high yield bond fund, which is a very solid signal of risk on, risk off, it's not confirming a lot of that, and it's more in sync with what's happening with the Russell 2000. Um, let's take a look at something that perked up this week. Let's take a look at the VIX. Okay, so here we've got, here's what happened on Friday. Yeah, we were down 290, so we dropped back down. But look what happened on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. All of a sudden, we're coming out of this basement. We're very, uh, you know, very sleepy, no risk, uh, you know, no fear kind of mentality. All of a sudden, we get the explosion Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And we close above the 20 level for the first time since, you know, March 26th. So all of a sudden, this is popping to life. And then we get the snapback on Friday. So we'll see, is this coming alive? And we're going to continue to get movement. I mean, nothing goes up in a straight line. I mean, you get constant movement back and forth. We'll see what kind of follow through do we get to become back above that 20 level this coming week. Uh, so keep an eye on that. And the other thing I just mentioned about, you know, the volatility in the bond market, uh, look at this, this move index, okay? So this index in here, when you talk about volatility, and you talk about what it's been doing, I mean, it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy volatility here. Uh, so, you know... You know, and we get these downdrafts. Now, this, for whatever reason, with the data I've got back in here prior to 2020, it just it gets closing prices. But you can see where was it in March of 2020 when, you know, the, the panic bottom that was occurring there at the end of March? Well, we spiked well above that in, in our March, you know, so basically three years later with, uh, with the whole banking uh, concern with the uh, the various banks that were going under. So uh, how much more of that is going on? You know, we continue to see a lot of things happening with the uh, with the regional banks, a lot of weakness in there. Um, hmm. You know, it's like, it's like one of the guys said, you know, uh, I read, you know, several weeks ago, he said, where there's, uh, what's that saying? You know, where there's one cockroach, there's usually more than one. So, uh, you know, and, and that's continued to surface that there's been more than one regional bank problem. And, you know, I, you know, keep an eye on this, too. Uh, so cracks in the armor and uh, divergence is showing up, volatility that's erupting. And um, the other thing I wanted to show you in here is this is a continued discussion that I'm sure you've seen and I've talked about before. But this picture on the NASDAQ, um, it, it just continues to play out. So the NASDAQ has, con has continued to push higher in the counter trend move. 
but the new highs, new lows have not confirmed that move at all. Here's that February 2nd high right here. And then the other interesting thing I, I was looking at is look at all these lows coming from you know, May of last year, September of last year. I mean, here's, here's the January. The extreme uh, new high, new lows uh, uh, net that readings that we were getting. Well, I think this trend line started to break here this last week. I think we get a continued breakdown out of this trend line and take out the, uh, the March lows. I think we're going to be well on our way to that uh, next leg down in the bear market. Okay, so that's another thing to keep an eye on. All right, so let's go back. Um, let me go back to the VIX because that's a picture that I'm used to looking at. I don't. I look at the move index periodically, but not on a daily basis like I do the VIX. Um, okay, next thing I want to talk about is looking at oil and gold. Okay, so let me pull up U.S. oil and let's talk about this because I know I'm talking about looking for the market, the uh, the stock market to head south and uh, another another leg down in the bear market, but I'm looking for movement to the upside in oil and I'm looking for movement to the upside in gold. So right now, when I look at oil, there's a couple of things. Uh, let's take a look at the picture here. USL, which is United States 12-month oil, up a dollar 13 on Friday, down 214 for the week. West Texas Intermediate closed. Uh, let me catch it. It closed at $71.35, and it had gotten down, I believe, into the 60s uh, this last week. So I want to take a look at the Ellie Wave picture I've got. The thing that's been a little bit confusing about this picture is, you know, we had a definite triangle in here, sideways movement for the B wave after this downdraft in here. Okay. Now, I was expecting much more of a leg down as a down thrust out of here uh, for the C wave. And then all of a sudden, you know, it stopped, reversed. This looks like an impulsive wave to me. That's why I have it labeled as wave one. So right now, I'm leaning into this count that says, hey, we're getting oversold on oil. We've come back in a deep retracement here. I mean, if you look at two versus one, it's very deep. Down here, almost at a low, almost got to 88.7% retrace. Now, if we continue to come down and take out this March low, which is 29.70, well then, you know, clearly this pattern is failing. But right now, I'm watching for this to keep pushing to the upside and reverse. Now, how, why, what is, you know, yeah, all I know is I'm watching the price action in oil, and this is what it's looking like to me. So we'll look to see, do we continue to get that kind of movement in here? Um, and then, you know, the same thing, it's going to have ramifications over here into XLE uh, for the same thing. And that's what I'm looking for on XLE. Let me just look at the moving average view in here. Yeah, we've pulled back, same, similar kind of picture as what I just showed you on USL. So it could be rather interesting to see if we start to get a turn in some of the oil stocks and they push higher. Okay, let's take a look at, at, uh, at gold. Well, actually, there is one other one I want to talk about, which, okay, XLE was his, uh, uh, the worst ETF performer on my chart of 16 ETFs for the year. Uh, the worst performance, the best performance as of through this last week is the semiconductors index. Now, SMH just split in my data provider doesn't readily adjust for the splits, so it screws up my chart. So let's take a look at the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index. So when I look at the Philly uh, uh, index in here, it looks to me like the counter trend move has broken down. Okay, so we've had a big strong move. Yes, it's been leading to the upside for the year, strongest move in here. Look at what happened in January. Okay, but now I think we're getting some weakness, getting some breakdown. We broke the counter trend rally from October. That happened right here on April 25th. We've had a little snapback up to the trend line. But this is what I'm watching is this support area 
in here on uh, on the Sox index. 396 to 400. I think we get a close below 396, and this is going to be downdrafting most likely in sync with what I just showed you on um, IWM. So this is how the Sox index looks. I think uh, that we've got uh, weakness that is definitely appearing uh, and kind of reinforces the buckle up theme that I've got. All right, let's take a look. So we're talking about oil going up, uh, weakness in the semiconductors. Let's take a look at gold because gold continues to act very strong. And here's the moving average view. Uh, down 298 on Friday. Big, big drop. But look at what happened Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the push to the upside. Up 266 on GLD for the week. Pretty strong move. I continue to look at this as we are moving to the upside. Now, when you look at the weekly chart in here, yeah, there's some divergences showing up. We'll see if we punch through those or not. But right now, I've got this label that we are in intermediate wave three of primary wave five. Now, if we get above this level here, 193 to 190, what, what do I have this? Is about 194 and a half, okay? That I think, you know, the dam's gonna break in the opposite direction. It's gonna be a, a huge burst to the upside. And what's interesting, this is a weekly chart. So let's look at all the data I've got on GLD. Okay, so here's the big picture. Here's that 2011 high over here. Well, where we're sitting on, with the close today at 180 on Friday, 187.46, that is the second highest weekly close in all the data that I have back to 1995. Second highest weekly close. So here's 187.46. And you can see it's well above even the intra-week highs of uh, September 2011. 185.85 was the intra-week high. So it's looking and acting strong. And if we get above these, these levels right here, I just talked about 193 to 194. We get a close above that. We're going to really be ripping to the upside. Now, silver's got a long way to go to cover. I'm not going to get into that right now to catch up with gold, but maybe that's going to be a great opportunity also. Okay, that is it for this video. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website. Check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.